And we're back. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Wrestling Jeopardy, the ultimate interactive pro wrestling trivia challenge on YouTube where you're the contestant. I am your host, Kevin J. Callis. Yeah. And I hope you're ready to test your AEW knowledge huh? and see if you can earn the title of Le Quiz Champion. Release the house! And celebrate your big dub with, of course, a little bit, a little of, the bit of the bubbly. <laughs> yeah, boy. So let's go to the board now and check out the categories you'll be quizzed on, starting with All Elite Women, followed by Name That Tag Team. Up next is Dynamite Debuts. And then we have Elite Finishers. And last but certainly not least, Tony Khanisms, where I'm going to read a quote from the president and CEO of AEW, and you're going to have to fill in the blank. And with that, let's start the show with the 200 point jobber round, the easiest round in Wrestling Jeopardy. You should go five for five here, and if you don't, can you really call yourself a wrestling fan? <laughs> Jumping in to All Elite Women for two. Beginning in the latter half of 2023, this wrestler adopted a new persona, which saw her transition into the character of a demanding and paranoid golden age of Hollywood starlet. And the correct answer, who is timeless, Tony Storm. Oh, this is just beginning. We are just scratching the surface. And that brings us to name that tag team, for two, Cash Wheeler and Dax Harwood are called what? Cash and Dax are just a couple of good old boys from Asheville, North Kakalaki, who go by the name of F.T.R. Top Gods, out. Moving on to Dynamite Debuts for two. Making his Dynamite debut in March of 2020 as the Exalted One, this wrestler would lead the Dark Order until his untimely passing later that year. Yeah, 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 the correct answer. Who was the late, great Brody Lee? The Exalted One has arrived in all elite wrestling! And we're on to Elite Finishers for 200. What AEW wrestler's finishing move is called the Coffin Drop? And the correct answer we're looking for here, who is Darby Allen? Oh my God! And let's finish up the 200 point round with Tony Conisms. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday my safety, my security, my blank was in danger at a wrestling show. And this, of course, is in reference to the firing of one Phil Brooks, a.k.a. CM Punk, when Tony Khan feared for his life. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. <laughs> all right, we're moving back to All Elite Women for 400. Jade Cargill finished up her AEW career in 2023 with this many wins and only two losses. Now, before the storm that is, Jade Cargill took her talents to the WWE. She finished her AEW career with a total of 60 wins. Damn, girl. What you saying? What you saying, huh? I pressed the wrong button. I'm so sorry. And we're on to name that tag team for four. Adam Cole and MJF are better known by this tag team name. Adam! And the answer, what is better than you, Bebe? You 
And that brings us to Dynamite debuts for four. In July of 2020, this underdog indie stalwart made his Dynamite debut by accepting Cody Rhodes' TNT Championship Open Challenge. And if you had never seen Eddie Kingston live and in living color spit fire on the mic, he brought it that night. Great promo. The correct answer, who is Eddie Kingston? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's my time now. And we're moving on to Elite Finishers for four. What AEW superstar uses the Powerbomb Symphony for their finishing maneuver? This guy has been heated up, cooled down, heated up, cooled down, all over the place. The correct answer here, who is Mr. Mayhem Wardlow? Powerbomb Symphony! And let's finish up the 400 point round with this, Tony Khanism. Today, I signed a deal. I just became the new owner of blank. And the answer we're looking for, what is Ring of Honor? Today I signed a deal. I just became the new owner of Ring of Honor. There's no shame. It's me. All right, 10 questions down, 15 to go. Plus, the Daily Double is still on the board. But hey, if you're enjoying yourself and you're having a good time, don't keep your hands in your pockets. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and also the ringy dingy notification icon bell so you get notified whenever we come out with a brand new episode of Wrestling Jeopardy. Thank you. I'll be here all night. Back to the game and all elite women for 600. This fan favorite won the 2023 Owen Hart Foundation Women's Tournament. How can you not love her infectious, bubbly personality? The correct answer, who is Willow Nightingale? And that brings us to name that tag team for six. All right, there it is. The Daily Double for this episode. Name that tag team is the category. Start thinking about all the AEW tag teams that there have been and their names and place your wager and now. All right, time is up. Let's go to the Daily Double clue. Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega also went by this tag team name. Paying homage to their Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada heritage. The correct answer, who were the Golden Jets? Moving on to Dynamite debuts for 600 in November of 2022. Jeff Jarrett made his AEW Dynamite debut in this Mid-Atlantic City. And the correct answer, what is Charm City? That would be Baltimore, Maryland. And that brings us to Elite Finishers for 600. The Elite Finisher for this AEW wrestler is called Blackout. And that would be, who is Lance Archer? And let's close out the 600 point round with this Tony Khanism. AEW's like the Pepsi of pro wrestling, WWE's like the blank of pro wrestling. Never thought I'd see the day that I'd fit this name into a uh, trivia question, but the correct answer here who is Harvey? Weinstein. AEW, like the Pepsi of pro wrestling. WWE's like the Harvey Weinstein of pro wrestling. And we're jumping back to All Elite Women for 800. Britt Baker received her Doctor of Medicine in Dentistry from this Pennsylvania University School. Yes, Britt got her Doctor of Medicine in Dentistry, 
her DMD, from the University of Pittsburgh's School of Medicine. Of course, I'd also accept the University of Pittsburgh. And that brings us to, name that tag team, four, 800. Brody King and Malachi Black are also known by this tag team moniker. Now you possibly got fooled here. You could have said they were the House of Black. That would be incorrect because these two go by the name of the Kings of the Black Throne. And moving on to Dynamite Debuts for 800. Jeff Hardy felt the need to perform this dance during his Dynamite debut before making his way to the ring to save his brother from a beatdown. Yes, as his brother Matt was getting pummeled by the former Hardy family office, Jeff took it upon himself to perform the Dougie. Uh, and his name is Jeff. And we're on to Elite Finishers for 800. Code Blue is the AEW finishing maneuver for this wrestler. And that would be the lovely and talented who is Sky Blue. And now, Code Blue! And let's finish up the 800 point round with this Tony Khanism. I'm blank. I'm not going to sit back and take this effing shite. Tony was ticked, but he was also very serious. And I'm not going to get, I'm serious. I'm not going to sit back and take this fucking shit. And that brings us to the most difficult round in Wrestling Jeopardy, the thousand point round. The steel cage begins to lower. The ominous music begins to play. Get your thinking caps on because these are going to be the five toughest AEW questions. So let's kick things off with the thousand point clue from all elite women. Once nicknamed the galaxy's greatest alien, Chris Statlander is this type of licensed therapist on planet Earth. In June of 2024, Statlander revealed on the AEW Unrestricted podcast that she sees herself as an unofficial member of the AEW medical team since she's able to help wrestlers recover from injuries because she's a licensed massage therapist. And we're on to name that tag team for a thousand. What was the name of the tag team of Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky? Having both experienced tag team success before becoming partners, Paige as part of the North with Josh Alexander and Sky as part of SCU. In March of 2021, the duo became known as the Men of the Year. And let's move on to the final clue from Dynamite Debuts. The Holiday Bash edition of Dynamite in December 2022 saw Swerve Strickland turn on Keith Lee and form a new stable called Mogul Affiliates alongside Parker Boudreaux and this wrestler. Having spent nine years playing minor league baseball before switching to pro wrestling, Grandin Goatsman made his debut as Trench and didn't compete in a single match during his entire tenure in AEW. And that brings us to the final clue from Elite Finishers. What AEW wrestler uses the finishing maneuver known as Deathly Hallows? Paying homage to the Harry Potter franchise, fans don't get to see Deathly Hallows too much these days, largely because Kip Sabian has been primarily used as someone to put over other wrestlers throughout his time in AEW. And let's close out the board with the thousand point clue from Tony Khanisms. He's the biggest part of blank success in the history of this company.
Now, back when the relationship between CM Punk and Tony Khan was all puppy dogs and ice cream, at the post Double or Nothing media scrum in 2022, TK would fire off a spicy, profanity-laced speech about Punk's financial impact in AEW. He's a biggest part of financial success in let's the history of this company. Go. Let's f***ing go! And let's f***ing go right into Final Jeopardy with this episode's category being... Cody Rhodes is all elite. AEW was a pivotal chapter in the book of Cody Rhodes. He was an important leader in the company's creation, and his work there firmly established him as a main event player in the world of professional wrestling. So think back about Cody's career in AEW is about three years long, and place your wager now. All right, time is up. Let's go to the final Jeopardy clue. After defeating his brother in a bloody battle at the inaugural Double or Nothing pay-per-view in 2019, Cody cut an emotional promo, asking Dustin to be his partner in a dream tag team match versus the Young Bucks at this event. Good luck. After defeating his brother in a bloody battle at the inaugural Double or Nothing pay-per-view in 2019, Cody cut an emotional promo asking Dustin to be his partner in a dream tag team match versus the Young Bucks at this event. Now, I'll be honest, this promo didn't leave a dry eye in the house as Cody went on to say to Dustin, I don't need a partner. I don't need a friend. I need my older brother. And that was basically Cody telling Dustin that he doesn't get to retire because he needed a partner to face the Young Bucks at AEW's fight for the Fallen. 